everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, we're gonna check out the ZenQ Synergy Core audio interface from Antelope Audio. I previously reviewed the Antelope Zen Go, which is sort of like a little brother to the Zen Q, but with the same studio grade preamps and converters. The main upgrade you get with the Zen Q is that it has several expanded I.O. options for people looking for more premium recording options. On the front, there are two high Z instrument inputs for direct input of guitars or bass, and these can also be switched to accept line level inputs, as well as two headphone outputs. On the back, you have two mic or line inputs with the same great preamps that are on all of Antelope's Zen products. You have left and right monitor outputs, as well as two additional line outputs. These can be used for two channels of external mixing hardware, or you could use them for a second set of speakers or for a headphone amp for tracking. Next to that is a SPDIF input and output. These can be used to connect up to two additional channels of preamps. So if you have a two channel mic preamp with SPDIF output, you can connect that device this way instead of using up the line inputs. I don't have any SPDIF gear to test out for this video, but one big improvement this unit has over the Zen Go is the addition of an ADAT input. ADAT is typically an optical format that's great for breathing new life into old equipment like audio interfaces and preamps. For example, I have an old Focusrite Liquid Sapphire here that I can't really use anymore as an audio interface because the speaker outputs are bad. However, all of the preamps still work great. I can connect my Sapphire ADAT output to the ZenQ ADAT input with a light pipe cable, and this expands the number of mic or line inputs from 2 to 10. So now I can have an additional 8 input channels this way. There is one drawback though. There's no ADAT output, only ADAT input. But this limitation won't really be an issue for most home recording enthusiasts, but I'll talk about this criticism later on in the review section. And then lastly, a USB connect to your computer for signal and power. Now the Zen Q does come in both a USB and Thunderbolt variant, with the Thunderbolt version $100 more than the USB version. While the controls on the front of the unit are quite condensed, you actually have pretty decent control over each input and output of the device. Use the gain button to switch between mic preamps 1 and 2 and high Z inputs 1 and 2. And use the big knob to adjust the preamp gain. Press the big knob once to switch between mic, line, or high Z inputs. For the mic preamp channels, press and hold the big knob to turn on phantom power. The HP monitor button switches between your line output volume, monitor volume, and the headphone volumes. Press the big knob once to mute each source and press and hold to dim the source. And the antelope button just takes you back to the main page where you can monitor your signal levels. The setup with these Zen products seems to be a bit more involved than most audio interfaces. So if you're setting this up for the first time, you'll want to create an Antelope account. Then download the Antelope launcher software and make sure the launcher is seeing your interface. In my case, I had to choose a different manager server and a different driver version to get my 2019 MacBook Pro to even recognize the device. And a couple of updates later, and I'm ready to launch the control panel for the Zen Q. In the control panel, you can control just about everything that you can control from the hardware, including monitor and headphone levels, preamp levels, phantom power, although you have to hold command or control on a PC and click on it to activate phantom power. You can invert the phase, and this third button shows some additional mic functions for Antelope's modeling microphones. I don't actually have one of these to test out, so I'll just skip it for now. Now to record, you don't actually have to have the control panel open. You really don't have to do anything here if you don't want to, but the AFX slots allow you to load up various different effects that can be included in your input signal, including preamp models, EQs, compressors, amp sims, etc. Next, I'll record a few musical examples so you can get an idea of the sound quality that you get from this unit. But I wanna be realistic about it. I do have a $2,000 tube mic sitting over there, but I already know that that mic is amazing sounding. So let's be a little more budget friendly and I'm gonna use a cheap Audio-Technica AT2020. This is a $99 condenser mic and let's see if these AFX preamp models in the Zen Q help improve the sound quality of this cheap mic. Okay, so to start, I do have some AFX pulled up, but they're all bypassed. So for this first example, we're just gonna hear the raw sound of the Zen Q's preamp on its own.
Next, I'm going to pull in the BAE 1073 preamp. This is going to have a little more gain, a little more saturation to it, a little more body. Yeah, I feel like it has a lot more detail to it. So next, I'm going to add in the VEQ1, which is a Poltec style EQ. I've got a little bit of a high end boost and a little bit of a low end boost going on here. All right, next up, I'm gonna add some compression. And for this, I'm gonna add the FET A76, just a little bit of light compression, about one or two dB. Okay, next up I'm gonna do vocals and guitar, and I did break out the tube mic for this, and I'm using the exact same settings for the guitar, but for my voice, I'm using a uh, Giraffe preamp, I'm using an SSL style EQ, and an LA-2A style compressor. So let's give this a shot. Take back what you said, take a look in the mirror. There's nothing left, nothing left to hide anymore. Take nothing more or less than what you have given. My mind is soaring high, staring at the stars. We will rise like fire in the night, like shadows have been cast over and lies that haunt us to this day we will rise never again will i be a slave to love but that tortured soul is gone we will rise we will rise we will rise we will rise I'll finish up this video with my review of the Zen Q. I don't have much bad to say about it, but I do have three main constructive criticisms. One criticism I gave the Zen Go was that it didn't have separate headphone knobs. The same goes for the Zen Q. Personally, I think for a $900 unit, headphone knobs should just come standard. Just add one clickable knob here to switch between and adjust headphone levels. My second criticism has to do with the USB connection. If you want to buy this unit and you have a computer that supports Thunderbolt, just pay the extra $100 and get the Thunderbolt version. You'll save yourself a lot of hassle. The USB cable you get in the box has two USB-A connectors on the end. I'm assuming this is because it's a bus-powered unit, so you need extra bandwidth for power and signal. This is no problem for a desktop computer with multiple USB-A ports, but if you're working with a MacBook Pro or any new laptop that only has USB-C, this can be problematic. Originally, I ran both of these into a USB-C hub, but I kept getting crackling noises in my recordings, and the unit would just disconnect intermittently. So what worked for me was to connect this USB connector to an adapter, and then plug this directly into the MacBook. 
Then I plugged this USB into another adapter, or in my case, a USB hub. Personally, I think this is a little ridiculous. It's a lot of wasted ports and adapters just for an interface. And while this is not included in the box, this issue can be alleviated by just using a single USB-C to USB-C cable. No adapters required. My third and last criticism has to do with the ADAT port, or the lack of an ADAT output port. Because the ZenQ doesn't have ADAT outputs, I cannot use it for outboard mixing, because I can only output two channels with the line outputs. Now there is another unit, the Zen Tour, which does support ADAT in and ADAT out, and it also has eight line outputs. So if you're looking for a similar form factor with even more I.O. for mixing, the Zen Tour will do this, albeit at a price point that's over two times the cost of the Zen Q. However, I don't want you to take this criticism the wrong way. Just having eight extra ADAT inputs is incredibly helpful for recording. You could buy one of these and then add on any cheap eight channel ADAT interface or preamp you like, and you can instantly have 10 channels of inputs for tracking drums or for live recordings. Add another Spitif two channel preamp and you've got 12 channels of input for even more mics. Because of these features, I would highly recommend the Zen Q for home studio enthusiasts that want more channels for recording, but still mix in the box. I would not recommend this for people who are looking to mix out of the box. Now, all of that criticism aside, the Zen Q is still gonna give you some of the best sounding recordings you can make in a home studio environment at this price point. In my opinion, the preamps and converters are top notch. They sound absolutely fantastic. I said something similar in my previous review of the Zen Go, that these Zen products essentially have studio grade preamps and converters in a home studio form factor and price point. And with the Zen Q, you can further shape the tone of your recordings on input using their AFX preamp models if you like. If you only record like one or two mics tops and maybe a DI guitar or bass here and there, but otherwise you're not tracking drums or making any live recordings with more than two channels, the Zen Go is probably gonna be a better option for you. And it's quite a bit cheaper too at 549 US. But like I said before, if you're looking to expand your inputs with another interface or preamp, the Zen Q is a great option and still sort of in the mid-tier price point at $899 for the USB version or $999 for the Thunderbolt version. So big thanks to Antelope Audio for sending over the Zen Q for me to review. If you want to check it out, I've left some links in the video description below. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.